Hi folks, show four. Um, had a few technical glitches this week. Um, a couple of the interviews, the quality is not as best, but that's because we were having loads of internet issues, but I'd rather have, have done them than not done them for you. So welcome along if you're joining us for the first time. And um, the whole idea behind this show is um, trying to share with you all the wonderful guests that I got offered that don't quite fit on the podcast. So hence why it's called Soundtrack and Extra. Um, and I get to speak to all different types of people. Uh, we're on show four and we have a wonderful show lined up for you. We're going to hear from Jeff Barrow, um, from who has many hats that he wears, of course, from Portishead. Uh, and composer extraordinaire, works a lot with Ben Salisbury and they, along with the Insects, have worked on the score for um, this brilliant Alex Garland TV series called Devs. I don't know if any of you have watched it yet. If you haven't, you really should. It's extraordinary. Um, anyway, managed to get a hold of uh, Jeff to talk about that very briefly which we'll get to in a bit, in a minute. Uh, also, Nit and Sony, who I'm a huge fan of, and Nitin is just kind of prolific in whatever he does. And we've got Nitin coming up a little bit later on in the show as well. But first up, Mr. Joe Gilgan, who I can't believe I've never met properly because I have been admiring his work from afar ever since I saw that very first um, this is England film, the Shane Meadows film, way back. Can't even remember what year that was, but it's a long time ago. And just fell in love with Woody and also that relationship of Woody and Lol. And then since then, it's been wonderful to see Joe um, flourish as an actor, be that in Pride or Preacher. And then, of course, in this brilliant caper that he's created called Brassix which is now in its second series uh, you can watch the entire second series is up there now but go back and check out the first and Joe's brilliant he's very honest man and he's very honest about um, his struggles and what he goes through personally both in terms of mental health issues but how he uses that to uh, really kind of penetrate his writing and I think that that the result of that is how much we love watching him on screen and how much we identify with his characters or root for his characters. So just to give you a little bit of a warning ahead of this interview with Joe, there's a wee bit swearing in it, um, but hopefully you'll get a lot of laughs from this as well. And it was an absolute treat to finally, finally get to chat with Mr. Joe Gilgan. I spent all morning watching the new series of Brassic. I've watched four episodes. Man. Yeah, it's the it? quality. It's so good. God, I'm really glad. I'm really pleased you like it. Thank oh, God. I think that. Do you know what it is? It's like you've got. I mean, because you've you you've been involved from the start of like with like the writing of it as well as the whole creation of it. It's your baby, isn't it? Really. It is. Yeah. I, well, I. Uh, it's been sort of. There's been a lot of ideas about percolating for quite a long time. Um, yeah. And I've always sort of, I've got to be careful here because you just, you don't want to come across arrogant, but I've always, <laughs> loved, I've always enjoyed coming up with, with, with creative uh, ideas for, for TV and film. And I felt like, because I'm dyslexic and because I look and sound the way I do, I think, uh, and the way, you know, the way I've chosen to come across, I'm, I'm just constantly trying to entertain. So I think like, <laughs> For many years, I've been like a construct of what I think people might want to see. You know, as yeah. I've older, I've gone like, hang on, mate, fucking hell, you don't have to do that at all. And and so I met. I, long story short, I met Dominic West on Prime. I mean, Dom West sort of ended up being mates, and he introduced me to David Livingston, who was the producer of Pride. And I told him a couple of stories. He told me to go away and write, a, write, get something down on paper, but I'm dyslexic, I'm just fucking useless. Like, my friend gave me an Anne Quail, uh, and we made this, like, we didn't know what we were doing, wrote like a hybrid book. Now, what I've not mentioned is I was going through a fucking breakdown. I, like, it's, you know, anyway, so I was in a bad way, and when they told me to go away and get something on page, I remember thinking, this is the only way I could remain in the industry. If this doesn't work, because I can't be an actor anymore. I'm terrified. I'm scared of everything. So, yeah, it was like this last ditch. In my head, I remember thinking, it's either this or you'll just never do anything again. When we took the book to David, he was like, this is just fucking horseshit. I don't know what to do with it. It's just this hybrid book of nonsense. Um, 
But what we done whilst we were writing this book is we taught ourselves, accidentally taught ourselves this. We created the whole fucking thing. The famous five. Six of us, Jim. But the famous six, then. You need to get him back Robin again. It's only 10K. Bye Friday. Bye Friday. Bye Friday. Bye Friday. Bye. Friday. Bye. But I think we've established how long we've got. It's very seldom that there are things on, on telly now that make me laugh out loud. I don't know what that says about me, but I was like, I was sitting, I was sitting this morning and every like 45 seconds, I was properly like, just like kind of really like barking laughter at it. It's so funny. I'm mad up, I'm mad up. I, I really, I hope to God that people just, it just cheers everyone up. Hello, lads. Hello. 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 I'm here to see Chinese Dan. Who is it? Vincent O'Neill. It's really hard to describe, and that's a good thing, I think, because it encompasses so many so many brilliant things also some brilliant little musical moments like tomo with the i want to know what love is in his pants that's just <laughs> yes yeah. uh, the start of episode two with your kind of like big musical number is just like amazing um, that was terrible was it well yeah because it was like so when i because you know I've, I've got to fucking do it and it's like you know Danny's i'm alive doing, you know, like, Jesus Christ, like, am I going to be able to do that? Because I'm going to feel ridiculous, aren't I? Like, I don't dance. I'm not the guy, you know, when you go out uh, to a pub or a bar and it's in that stage where everyone's smashed and having a dance. And I'm not him. And I remember going like, can we, is there any chance we can just fuck that up? Like, like, no, come on, dude, go do the dance. It's like, I don't really all want to dance. Every, every one of them, like, you must dance. You must, Come on, dude, you must dance. Don't be a bitch. So in the end, I had to. I remember when I first saw you and, you know, this is England, and you're instantly kind of drawn to that, to Woody and to that character and, and going on that journey with him. And so much of that is down to how you brought him to life on screen and, you know, and throughout yeah. all that. And I think that that's really true in so much of, you know, what you've done in between that. You're going to pride and preacher and all that stuff. And, mm -hmm. and this in particular, I just think that, like I was saying about there being truth, I think that's about like your portrayal and like hearing the story, it feels like there is a lot of you in, in that character in a way, you know, obviously he's a fictional yeah. character, but, we've been, but it we've feels been, like... Damn, we've been as honest as we can be and I've laid myself as bare as, as, as he's safe, I guess. Like, you know, me and Danny and Liv, who's uh, David Livingston, our producer, we talk a lot about, it was important that our sort of, that Vinny, was like a really shit hero, and I think I feel like I've I've just crushed it. <laughs> oh my god! Is it flesh? Returned from the dead. It's Osama bin Laden. Mm -hmm. You're right. I've been in a weed bunker now for three months, pissing in bottles and that. Where were you shitting? Never mind where I've been shitting. I can't see out this eye, you know. I've I've got gums that are constantly bleeding. I can't work out where I've got. I think I've got scabies. I've been fucking belling you up. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry, Vin. I've been, uh, I've been snowed under. But I have been thinking about you. In fact, I was thinking about you last weekend. I was with this uh, lady friend. We were having a picnic. Well, I'll say picnic, you know, some brie and nibbles and cheeky little glass of Rioja. And... That is a pi that's a picnic. Do you encourage, like, improv on, on you know... If you're going to jump off the script, it's got to be better. Like, otherwise, mm. we'll... Pull them back onto it. Like we're all very mm -hmm. honest with each other. If it's not working, then don't do that. Maybe do this instead, or just don't do anything at all. We do a lot of improvising. We always make time for it. And and John Wright, who's one of our our regular directors, uh, well, I'm very fond of John. I love John. Um, he, I mean, he's massive on improvisation, and like he he always saves a take where he just says, "Look, just talk about it. do whatever you want." Um, we put that time aside because you just don't know something brilliant might happen. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we love improvising on the job. And, and and this is the other thing, you know, and I'm sure there's a lot of actors, directors and writers out there that would agree is you, you can get on set and, and stuff just doesn't work. Like the thing that you wrote behind your desk, 
doesn't work here in this whatever, like. If you bring back the car, I'll have the end of it. But if you don't, he'll hunt you down, he'll find you, and right. I will kill you. All right, if you bring Stop back the car, that'll be the end of it. But if you don't, hold it. Dial the number. It's such a good show, mate. You've done a so, so great job. Yeah, for, 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 for watching it and, and saying such lovely things. It makes my heart burst to to know that you and Vicky are like keeping touch and stuff because like Lowell and Woody, I think were, you know, I think if, if for me in terms of like iconic partnerships on screen, um, mm. for me, they're just, that, that was something really special that over the course well, of those. I, I just think we are Lowell and Woody, like on the phone, she was telling me that Shane wants to do it. She, he's, apparently he's like, I think it was on Shibby's fucking podcast, actually. He's got, yeah, I'm going to do another This Is England. So everyone's gone ape shit. Yeah. And she was like, we've got to do another one. I was like, no, I'm not doing it. I'm not. <laughs> she was like, no, we've got to do it. I went, we've both got AIDS in it. Lol and Woody have got AIDS. Woody got AIDS from Lol because she's been playing around like, we just are the characters. We just are like we we no Joe no. Because <laughs> I don't like working. Will there be another brassic though? Will there be another brassic? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's a nightmare. Yes. Yeah. In terrible night, we're victims of our own success. It's like a terrible nightmare. Like we've got to do another one now. Brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. And now, do you know what though? Like I've got to tell you. We, we have these meet, these creative meetings and we have the best laugh in these meetings. Like, we really enjoy doing it. Like, it's, it's fucking hard. There's a lot to do, but we love our jobs. We know how lucky we are to be doing what we're doing, all of us. It's a family from top to mm. bottom. Um, the fucking cleaners at the end, of everyone, everyone involved. We all know each other, all love each other. And I think it's, it's partly, I think the show's success is, is partly down to how well we all get on. I think it comes over, you know. Yeah. Listen, I'm going to let you go. Um, it's been a bloody treat chatting to you. It really has. Thanks for being so bloody lovely about it. It's nice to finally meet you, mate. Yeah, you too. I hope we see each other soon. Not I in another, like, ten years or whatever. Joe, thank you, mate. Take Thanks care. Bye, Bye, darling. Bye. We're moving up here. Yeah. Told you there was a wee bit of swearing in that, but hey, I don't care. I'm Scottish. I'm used to it. Um, I loved chatting to Joe, and I hopefully that's going to be the first of many opportunities that we have over the years to come. Um, genuinely, Brassic made me laugh so much. Um, it made me laugh more than anything has in a very long time. And right now, I think we could do with a few laughs. So my encouragement to you is to go and check that out now because it's bloody brilliant uh, Brassic's then available on Sky for you to check out now um, next up Mr Jeff Barrow has been a, a guest on the podcast quite a few times uh, he was uh, a feature with Alex Garland and his composing partner Ben Salisbury and the three are back together uh, with a little help from the insects on this new BBC drama called um, Devs now Jeff and his record company partner Reg are going to be guests on the podcast um, this weekend, which you can check out because they have a great record label called Invader Records. Oh, there's my phone going off. Uh, they have a great record label called Invader Records, which works on a lot of soundtracks. And so I really wanted Jeff and Reg to kind of take me back to the kind of start of the label and talk us through, you know, what they're doing now and how Jeff, as a writer, as well as a label kind of, um, you know, partner, how he navigates that whole thing. So that's going to be the full length feature episode of the podcast this week. But I managed to grab Jeff just briefly to talk to him about the brilliant score on Devs. I am, what, I'm five, ep five episodes in now. And, yeah. and every... I mean, it's just, it's mind-blowing. It's so hard to describe to people as well, which is such a great thing. You know, it's like so rare you get the opportunity to go, have you watched this program, Devs, yet? And someone goes, what's it about? And you go, um... And the music is extraordinary in it because it, it plays so many parts and there's so many different kind of sounds in there as, as, as well. And you've obviously got history with, with working with Alex, you and Ben. 
Um, yeah. But the thing that you do really well is the, is kind of, you know, it's, it's, it's collaboration, I guess. And I know that Alex can push people hard and I know that he's, you know, he's a perfectionist when it comes to everything that he does sort of thing. But just in terms of the sound of the show, was it an easy thing to kind of, or, or how, what were the conversations that you had around how devs would sound? both sonically and also in terms of that kind of sound, that, that marriage between the kind of production sound and score and stuff? Well, I mean, you know, uh, we, we'd work with uh, Alex on on um, Ex Machina and Annihilation. Um, uh, this is me and Ben. And, um, and it was an eight, it's an eight episode TV show. Um, and we'd also worked with um, the Bob and Tim, who are a Bristol uh, composing uh, duo, much like myself and Ben, but they've been doing it a lot longer, um, and they're really cool. They, you know, they wrote a lot of uh, protection for Massive Attack, and they've got you know an awful lot of history and of, of good stuff. And um, and um, they are friends. So basically, there was there were there was a couple of issues, per, personal issues with health, and then and and some timing issues and stuff like that that we just said look let's all work together on it um and uh that's what ended up happening i i did a, a few episodes and then i went on tour um and it was an awful lot of work i mean you know alex does like to if you write a cue for series one um it it, no doubt within a week it's gone from episode one and it's been reversed and and it's on episode seven <laughs> and and he's there going well it works kind of sometimes <laughs> and you go yeah well it works sometimes because it wasn't meant for that but 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 you but ultimately you trust and love his work yeah he's a, he, he is someone who is incredibly special in this modern age of, of film and television and we're just lucky to work with him so so um so yeah uh, it, it's worked out really well i mean you know uh it was the first it was the first kind of like adult thing to go on hulu which is the disney version of netflix yeah um so people are still signing up for it in the states and then but luckily enough because it was fx the bbc had had rights to it and um and and it's really really odd because what's happened is that everybody obviously everything that's gone on in the real world everybody's at home yeah and strangely enough like everyone's taking their time they're not binging everything so it's weird i have people say well i'm going to watch devs tonight and i'm not going to watch anymore i'm going to watch it next week and it's really odd mm -hmm. it's like it's it's going back into the past where you would watch <laughs> Ten Tenko, or um, <laughs> or I don't know some something that was only on once a week, and it's really really odd because it, you, I go on Twitter and everyone's talking about the episode that was on last night and not the whole series. Jeff Barrow there talking about the brilliant score for Devs. If you haven't watched that yet, it's on the iPlayer on the BBC. Alex Garland's brand new um, series. It's extraordinary. I mean, I'm still kind of asking a lot of questions about it, but I think that's a sign of a good TV show. So yeah, go and check it out. Uh, and finally, Mr. Nitin Sony for you today, who is a man I love spending time with and the music that he's creating at the minute, which is as an artist, not as a composer, um, is so... I'm so glad that he's doing it right now because it's an absolute breath of fresh air. He's got a brand new track out called You Are, um, which he has the vocals of Eva on this. Um, and it's stunning, absolutely stunning. We've got a new record coming in September, which features this track in the previous. Um, and also he's got loads of work on the way where he's composing for TV and film. And it's going to be next week's guest on the podcast, so you can hear a lot more of that interview on next week's podcast. But in the meantime, um, here's a bit of a catch up with me and Nitin Sonny talking about this brilliant new music that he's writing. You are my religion. You are my land. You hold ambition within your hand. How are 
are you? Yeah, I'm all right. I'm, it's, it's all, as you know, I mean, it's just bonkers. I haven't actually been out since lockdown. Um, Not I've, like been out in the fresh air? No. Uh, well, I have been, as in, in my courtyard, but I haven't been at work because I'm asthmatic. And the thing is, yeah. I was reading about the idea of aerosols in, in it, that can linger up to 30 minutes in the air. Um, if somebody coughs or sneezes, so you can walk into one of those. So I just thought, I'm, I'm not going to risk that. Just, yeah. But, you know, I mean, you know, I moved the studio here just to, to my house just before lockdown. So literally on the day of lockdown. So I, I turned around to Tina and Harry, who, who work with me, and I just said, um, I just said we need to, um, we need to move the studio to my house. And they, they I think they thought I was a bit crazy. <laughs> and uh, and I said, no, I just got a feeling, you know. And and so we did. And literally, wow. as we finished setting it up, they announced the lockdown. I was like, oh, thank God for that then. Um, That's so I've amazing. Got, got, what ins insight. Yeah, I've yeah. got all my, <gasps> all my gear here. So I've got all my stuff uh, kicking around. So it's it's actually, so I've been able to be stay creative. And, yeah, and yeah, yeah. Good thing. Yeah. Well, um, I've been listening to this new single, You Are, on repeat. It is the oh. perfect, it's just, I don't know, it just sums up so much of right now. It's just, um, it's kind of crazy. Like, weirdly, like with you talking about, you know, you had the foresight to move the studio into the house before this happened. It's almost like this, you knew this was coming and you knew we would need this piece of music because from the words to the melody to the subtleness of it and the kind of almost like the bareness of it it's just oh it's gorgeous congratulations well, thank you thank you i mean it was it was a strange thing writing it because when i was i wrote the lyrics first i wrote it as a poem um and i was kind of like thinking about the idea of, of immigration and isolation mm -hmm. weirdly and i was i was and also the idea of of people uh who have one companion and and then and then thinking about it in, in, in symbolic terms, so it's kind of a metaphor as well of our relationship with with the nation and with you know. So there's so many layers to it in terms of what I was feeling at the time. Yeah. Um, and then and then I just put it just kind of I just you know wrote the song and wrote the, the music and then uh, and then the natural person to get to sing it was Eva, who's mm. who's got a gorgeous voice and um, and she was uh, the singer on the last single I did down the road, uh, which yeah. is also kind of bizarrely pressure as well and not not intentionally so but these uh, these songs seem to kind of be you know kind of relevant lyrically and in terms of the feel uh, which i'm very happy about in one way but very sad about in another how long ago did you write the lyrics i wrote the lyrics last year okay. um and uh, it was in it, it was with all of the demonization i mean you know this next album as as uh, i think you might know is um, is going to be called immigrants yeah and so um this is from this the second single that's from that um and that's coming out in september and the thing the thing is that i i really wanted to respond to the constant demonization of immigrants and um you know if we're looking at the nhs right now and how many bame uh, workers have, have lost their lives protecting all of us um and it's kind of you know it's amazing when i think as well about my parents and um and how they were always thinking about other people. They never thought about themselves and mm. they came here to give a better life to their children, you know? And, yeah. and I kind of think it's, um, there's something very selfless about, um, about the immigrants in this country that, that is not a story that's told very often. It's really interesting because I kind of feel like there's been a real lack in the, you know, not, not kind of cro across the board, but um, I think music has kind of has lacked a real sense of a purposeful voice, if that's the right way to put it, in terms of, you know, you think back to like the 70s and all the kind of protest songs and all these amazing pieces of music um, and lyrics that were written that had a real kind of opinion and point of view and were, were speaking for a whole kind of collection of people. And I feel like we've we've really been lacking that kind of um, mm -hmm. over the last few years. And it's it's such a shame that it's taken the severity of the situations that we've watched so many people go through for that to then kind of come to fruition as well. And, you know, we were talking to Riz Ahmed a couple of weeks ago and he's made a whole album and this- Long Goodbye, um, brilliant Oh my God, album. have you seen yeah. the short film as well? That, oh yeah, my yeah, God, very it's powerful. incredible. I mean, I've known Riz for a long time. He's, a, he's amazing and-, and um, you know, where you from? I think is a really powerful short, uh, short kind of poem, really. Yeah. And um, 
I mean, but, but at the same time, there's people like Kate Tempest as well. Who, Absolutely. Who, you know, yeah. So that's felt, what I mean. I mean there's the, been this sort of, there's been the kind of, there's been the kind of few who have kind of, kind of, there's a real purpose to what they're saying. And it's, you know, it's, I always feel like with you, when your music has had lyrics to it, you know, and you do this, you, you have these worlds where you don't have lyrics in your music, but in the world where you do, there's always purpose to them. There's always oh, something you. being said for the good thank of other people, I think. Is well, I think, I think, yeah, I mean, I, I always try to make um, everything that I do cathartic first. And, and so it's what I'm feeling or it'll capture. And, and it might not be literal. It might be just an abstract way of capturing the feeling that I have at that mm. moment or even a, a semi dream state that I might be in or, or whatever. But it's kind of um, I'm always trying to find. Um, I mean, I, I think there's something about. Um, you know when you're when you're an artist you know you're you're tapping into a zeitgeist all the time and it's like i think we have a symbiotic relationship with society with everything that's around us and strangely now you know we're having that relationship through a world of isolation and mm. it's kind of so it's kind of that filter or that prism that we're kind of looking through to to to, to look out the world um and that kind of is such a strange feeling so so yeah i mean i'm I'm kind of, especially when I'm talking about or thinking a lot about immigrants and the immigrant experience. It's kind of a, it's a weird, it's a weird, you know, thing to actually be so trapped and and yeah. isolated and and thinking about all of that. Yeah, it's um, I think that this 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 track, and I'm really excited about hearing the rest of the album. You see, it's coming in September. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm really enjoying uh, working on it, and um, and I've I've really enjoyed some of the collaborations. I'm I'm kind of continuing to do that. Um, how do you, how do you make a decision on who you're going to collaborate with? Hmm. Uh, yeah, that's a big one. I mean, it's <laughs> well, it's kind of uh, it's people that I I quite often know or am friends with or or find interesting. Um, I mean, you know, or or have just tried something out and then I'll think, oh, it'd be amazing to do something with them. I mean, you know, um, and it might not be even a musician. It might be someone with spoken word or it might be someone um, doing something totally different. Um, you know, obviously working with dancers like Akram Khan or, or um, working with film directors like Andy Serkis or, um, you know, at the moment I'm talking to David Harewood about doing uh, doing a little project together, oh, um, which will be online. And uh, and we've known each other a long time. And, uh, yeah. you know, so it's, it's nice to actually uh, kind of reconnect with some people as well and, and try something unexpected. I mean, I, I like to do things that don't feel too predictable. So it kind of, it feels like this is, you know, an opportunity to try out uh, new ways of thinking. Well, I think one of the last times that I saw you in person was at the Roundhouse for the Jack Bruce. Um, oh yeah, oh yeah. Gig yeah. that yeah. you you were the music um, director, well, director yeah. for yeah, that, indeed, which was yeah. this amazing celebration of of Jack's musical life, really, when yeah. you know his daughters were involved in it and this amazing Ginger collection. Baker. Ginger Baker, oh my God, I know. <laughs> yeah, oh man, I know. In I can't imagine the... for you, love. Of you, love. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But that was a brilliant thing. And I think that's the thing about, that I love about you. And I was lucky enough that we got to spend a bit of time together when we did the Sky and um, Guitar Star series. And, mm. and you just, you're this kind of, you know, music is music for you. It's not about genre. It's not about, mm. you know, a box. It's just about... Uh, what you like and what you know kind of is emotional to you as well has it always been that way yeah I think I think music was I mean you know luckily uh, I mean I I kind of grew up listening to so many different types of music um, and and uh, you know we'd have we'd have kind of you know I'd be listening to Led Zeppelin and uh, and the doors next to Pandit G Ravi Shankar and next <laughs> to uh, some Cuban music and, and a flamenco guitarist and my dad had a very eclectic record collection he loved music he just liked, liked music from all around the world you and and i'd sit there looking at the sleeve notes on the vinyl you know and just reading through them over and over and kind of really excited and and i would get excited by great album covers you know and um, and it was kind of like um you know I, I guess all of that felt like i i kind of um developed a taste for music and the possibilities of music and storytelling yeah. through music you know Absolutely. a lot of the a lot of the bands i really loved and lots of artists i really loved were people who could really tell great stories through their music whether it might be through uh, and that's you know goes for film composers obviously as well and and that's probably why i've ended up doing a lot of that work is um 
is because you know it's about it's about what you can uh as it's about catharsis first and expression second but it's always about narrative yeah so i i kind of i really enjoy that and and um you know it's i mean there's a really weird narrative to how life has turned out for me in relation to that i mean you know i've, I've said before i mean um Pandit to Ravi Shankar I, I was listening to all the time when I was seven six or seven years old and and now you know just the other day there I was um, doing a collaboration in isolation with uh, Anishka Shankar yeah. his daughter and we did that to uh, you know to celebrate the anniversary of Ravi Shankar the 100th um, so the centenary so um, that was you know, a version of fathers yeah 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 that's right which um you know that was a very emotional thing because um both our fathers passed away when we were making that album and uh, i was producing and uh, we had nora jones on there and um who who also sung a a song called unsaid which is really beautiful about all the all the stuff that she never got to say to her father and you know it was bizarre that both of us lost our fathers um within months of each other during mm. the making of that record so it was um it was a very powerful thing but um uh, i mean she was amazing and lovely mm. friend and, you know but it's kind of you know like i said there's been a narrative to certain things you know like where where i, I would be listening to certain artists and focusing on a lot um early on in life they've kind of appeared later on in my actual real life which is kind of weird you know um meeting jimmy page and, and robert plant um independently uh, mm -hmm. working with um working with sting um you know obviously paul mccartney you know people who were characters in a way in my early life um i've ended up working with or getting to know a little bit you know and that's um, amazing that's kind of a surreal thing really. yeah oh it's so nice to chat to you yeah same to you um, we still need to, you still need to teach me how to play Blackbird. Absolutely. So maybe yeah, when you have a spare afternoon, you can, I mean, it's going to take longer than an afternoon to teach me how to play Blackbird, but, but yeah, um, yeah, I would love to. Yeah, absolutely. No, let's do it. Well, actually, you know, that we've got the opportunity to do it sooner or later now. So it's kind of like, yeah. you know, now that now the whole world's kind of interacting this way. Yeah, let's do it sometime. Amazing. Really it's cool. so lovely to chat to you. I'm really Thank looking you. forward to the album. Um, take care, stay safe, Thank and uh, you, speak you to you soon. Brilliant. Bye, Nathan. Thank you, like you so bye. much. Thank bye. you. Bye. 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 There we go. That's this week's show. Thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe and we'll be back next week with more from Soundtrack and Extra. In the meantime, check out this week's podcast with Jeff and Reg, special on Invader Records and stay safe.